Today we're going to talk about chapters 20 and 21, which cover carboxylic acids and their derivatives. In our textbook, chapter 20 covers just carboxylic acids, but they have mixed in some material about derivatives. So I've decided to just put the two chapters together as they sort of make sense as a whole. We're going to start by talking about nomenclature of carboxylic acids themselves, which is actually quite important for later nomenclature because we're going to see that many of the derivatives are named based on the name of the parent carboxylic acid. The IUPAC nomenclature of carboxylic acids has actually already been covered since carboxylic acid was one of the uh, functional groups that we discussed in our general IUPAC nomenclature. It has, uh, among all the functional groups, the highest priority since it is the most oxidized. And so, therefore, whenever we have a compound that has a carboxylic acid in it, it will be the main functional group, and therefore, um, the carboxylic acid carbon will be number one, and uh, it will also take the ending. So if we were to summarize this for just the carboxylic acid, what we would see is we would find the longest carbon chain which contains the carboxylic acid. We would count the number of carbons in this chain and determine the parent stem name. We would uh, determine any unsaturations and put those in. So that would be ane or, an or ene or whatever. And then we would add the suffix oic acid so if it has no unsaturations, then the entire suffix would be anoic acid, as we've indicated here. We would number the carbon chain from the carboxylic acid, and then we would add substituent names with appropriate numbers. So if we look at this example down here, we can see that starting with the carboxylic acid carbon that has the C double bond O carbon, we count that carbon. So that would be one, two, three, four, so that would make it a butte. Because this example has no unsaturations, we would say an, and then we would drop the E because our ending would be oic acid. Our ending starts with a vowel, so we drop the E at the end of the unsaturation name. And then finally, if we look here on carbon three of our chain, we have a methyl group attached. So that would be three methyl butanoic acid. There are some pretty important common names of carboxylic acids that you should memorize. The first of these is the simplest carboxylic acid. It's essentially the carboxylic acid where there is only the carboxylic acid carbon. And then on the carbon group side, there is just a hydrogen. This is called formic acid. Um, F-O-R-M form refers to this substructure, hydrogen attached to carbon, double bond O. And in fact, formic acid was the original form because it was actually isolated from fire ants and it was named formic acid because Latin for ant is formica. So this was the acid from ants. We also have acetic acid, which hopefully by now you're familiar with. Acetic acid comes from vinegar, and the Latin name for vinegar is aceto, or aceto is actually how it's pronounced. We have benzoic acid, again, probably a structure you're already familiar with. And then finally, I want to introduce you to one more common name, which is sometimes used, not as much as it used to be. But this is the 4-carbon carboxylic acid, which is originally isolated from spoiled butter. And therefore, it was given the name butyric acid. You can see the sort of butter name here. Um, and so uh, while I don't know for certain, I sort of suspect that the bute that we use as a prefix for four carbon things came originally from this acid in the way that form came from formic acid. We also would like to learn how to name dicarboxylic acids because, as we're going to see down below, there are a number of very important, biologically important, dicarboxylic acids. So, to name a dicarboxylic acid, we're going to find the longest carbon chain which contains both carboxylic acid carbons. 
We're going to count the number of carbons in this chain, name it as the corresponding alkane. Actually, if it has an unsaturated, we would put an unsaturation after the parent name. And then we would add the suffix dioic acid. So here's an example. 4-carbon carboxylic acid, 1, 2, 3, 4. So it's butte. This one has no double bond, so it's ane. Then it's dioic acid. And we keep the E after the unsaturation because the first letter of the ending is a consonant. There are several common names of dicarboxylic acids that you should memorize because these are actually quite important in biological chemistry and they do come up in other circumstances. So the first of these is this dicarboxylic acid, which is the smallest dicarboxylic acid we can have, and it is called oxalic acid, oxalic acid. So it's C double bond O, OH, attached to C double bond O, OH. The next one is the four carbon dicarboxylic acid that we actually named the IUPAC name above. This has a very commonly used common name. Um, the common name of this is succinic acid. And this dicarboxylic acid is very important because it appears in the Krebs cycle. Although if you have studied the Krebs cycle, the interesting thing about the uh, names of the uh, substances in the Krebs cycle is they are named as the deprotonated forms of the acid. So you would have heard this named as succinate, but it comes from succinic acid. Similarly, this is a dicarboxylic acid which has four carbons and then it has a trans double bond in between carbon two and three. This is called fumaric acid. And again, in the Krebs cycle, you would have heard this named fumarate. Finally then, there's the cis equivalent of fumaric acid, which is called maleic acid, which was actually the foundation for the dicarboxylic acid anhydride that we used in the Diels-Alder. The last dicarboxylic acid that I would like you to know is this one right here, where we have a benzene ring and it has a carboxylic acid and then ortho to that another carboxylic acid. This has a very strange name for English speakers. It is phthalic acid, phthalic acid. Um, it's a very important dicarboxylic acid because it's used as a building block for many of the plastics that we find in our modern world. Finally, with regard to carboxylic acid nomenclature, I would like to talk to you about how we name carboxylic acids when they have been deprotonated. So when we react carboxylic acid with a base, we form what is called a carboxylate salt. The salts have two ions, the deprotonated form of the carboxylic acid, which is going to be a negative ion. And then that is going to be paired up with some type of positively charged counter ion. So for example, sodium is very common potassium, or even ammonium. So to name this, what we do is we start by naming the carboxylic acid. We then take off the ic acid ending of the carboxylic acid name and we replace it with A-T-E. So for example, this deproton is the deprotonated form of acetic acid. So we would start with the name acetic acid, we would cross out the ic acid, and we would add A-T-E on the end. And then actually to be technically correct, we would call this acetate ion, because it's a negatively charged ion. So if we look then, this becomes important when the carboxylic acid has an O in its name. In that case, you keep the O. So for example, here's benzoic acid. If we deprotonate it, we take off the ic acid and we add ATE, but we keep the O. So this is called benzoate, not benzate. Similarly, butanoic acid, when deprotonated, forms butanoate, not butanate. 
if we are presented with the full chemical substance, which would have both ions together, so this for example is what you would find in a bottle on the shelf, we have to complete the name by also naming the positive counter ion. Because this is an ionic substance, we're going to follow the uh, convention for naming ionic substances where the positive ion name is put first, then the negative ion. So in this case, we would say sodium, which is the positive ion, and then acetate, negative ion. Here's ammonium, positive ion, benzoate.